I've had the 10th edition Leviathan box set for a couple of weeks now, but the original focus for one of my boys and I was to get the Space Marine half ready for him so that he had some new and exciting toys to play our very first games of 10th edition with. But he's getting on top of his Space Marines, so now it's time to treat myself to some of the new larger Tyranid models, which I'm really excited about. There's new sculpts for the smaller ones, but I already have so many of these models in my collection that even if I'm painting new sculpts of them, it's gonna feel like a bit of a chore. I'm not that excited about it. But the big bugs, I certainly am. And I guarantee you that if you're hyped to paint something, none of it will feel like work. So in this video, I'm going to paint the three large Tyranid models that come in the Leviathan box set. There's the Neuro Tyrant, the Screamer Killer, and the Psycho Fame. Psycho Fame. We'll talk about batch painting and also time management along the way, but make sure you stick around to the end because I'm going to have a look at one of our channel subscribers custom high fleets. I'm going to play around with the painting style and there might even be a model or two that's given away. My Tyranids have a dark carapace and light skin, which can be a pain when it comes to priming and base colors. The way I approach this is to start with a base coat of my lighter color, which in this case is Wraithbone. I'll be using contrast paints on the skin and prefer how they look over the top of this primer. I won't get this perfect, but the idea is to successfully mask off most of the areas so that I can spray the carapace black. I'm going to make long slinky snakes out of poster tack and then feed that around the edge of the armor panels. Masking tape strips are being used to cover the remainder of the model's light skin sections. And like I said, it's not perfect, but this will catch most of the overspray. Black for the prime and base coat of the armor so that I have a strong contrast as my starting points for the two different areas. I'm using the airbrush for my armor panels because I have one and it can save a lot of time when batch painting larger models like these. And when the airbrush and I are getting along, I can create some nice blends. I've played a couple of games of 10th edition already with Gordon as we started to learn the new rules. A great way to enter a new game or a new edition of a game is to start small and slowly scale your way up. There was a lot of double checking keywords, so a 500 point and then a 1000 point game kept the pace going well. It's an ominous start though for me in 10th as Gordon's Imperial Guard made easy work of my orcs. His indirect fire, those tasty Lehman Rust tanks, and what felt like the orc's inability to accurately do anything or rely on armor protection meant that I was quickly removing toys from the board. Maybe Tyranids are the answer though. Big Tyranids in fact. I'm now pinning my hopes on a redemption battle victory on these intimidating looking bugs. The models are in sub-assembly, meaning most of the limbs aren't attached yet. That also means that I can't play with them in games between my painting sessions, but it's gonna make the painting a lot easier. I can get into those hard to reach places. When I'm preparing to start a new batch of models, I like to list out each of the steps on a piece of paper first, and I almost always discover that there will be a more efficient order to paint them. I spend five minutes creating this running order, and I save 30 minutes of reloading different paints into an airbrush that I already used on other parts of the model. For example, I need to use blues on the bases of the models, which will show through the cracked ice. So whilst the paint is loaded, I kill two guardsmen with one stone. That's an old hive mind proverb, I'm pretty sure. I'm using the Badger Patriot 105 airbrush, which is amazing for us beginners, as it's very forgiving and is durable. Airbrushing can often be portrayed by some painters in the hobby as a cheat or it's a point of frustration when there are tutorials that feature an airbrush when not everyone owns one. Having used one as part of my painting options for a couple of years now, I can say that I really enjoy having it, but I need to prepare myself for some tinkering and light googling in order to troubleshoot each time it's not operating smoothly. And I'll show you in this video as well that the effects that people achieve with an airbrush, you can still achieve by brush. The main trade-off being the time you spend achieving the same effect. I've spoken a little about the lore for my custom high fleet in other videos, but the premise being that they've been laying dormant beneath the frozen caps where the hive mind have them poised to ambush prey. The name High Fleet Wendigo was suggested to me, and I love it. Let's push through some of this airbrushing and see what else I can offer you today.
My favourite part now, as I get to pull all the masking tape and post attack away. I feel like the surgeon pulling away the Joker's bandages in 1989's Batman. Mirror! Mirror! A lot of you have already seen my Tyranid Army Showcase and you've left me a lot of support there, so thank you so much. But it also means that you know what models aren't included in my army and you can help me pick out what I should paint for the Tyranids next. Those new Pyrovore and Biovore models look fantastic and my army doesn't have much in the way of shooting and especially indirect fire. But maybe there's a reason for that. Maybe I need even more talons in my skittering horde. Let me know in the comments below what I should include because believe me, I do read them all. I've added some accents and character to the armor with little moot green dots on random carapace panels because someone recommended it when I first started on my Tyranids and now I'm in too deep to stop. Contrast paints that have been thinned down are great for bright coloured flesh. Often we use them straight out of the pot onto a white model to cover them, but what if? What if we only want to tint the white? Well here I'm mixing a blue, a white and a contrast medium together and painting this in all of the skin recess areas. It looks as though it's coming out of the pot, but I mixed my own bottle a year or two ago because I was painting this across an entire army and saved me mixing it onto a palette every single session. I want some of these areas to pop out a little more, so I'm going to try using the Athematic Blue direct from the pot. The mouths and tentacles need to look a little more fleshy, scary and bloodstained for my liking. I'll mix a brown and pink from the contrast range with medium again and push these together. I think I'll add some more gore effects later, but I'm happy with this as a starting point. Now while these contrast paints are drying, I jump across to all of my talons and in an assembly line, I'm painting these sharpest edges with a bright orange. Oops, I forgot that the Screamer Killer has those two large feet planted on the ground, and when I was airbrushing with all the reds before, I completely missed these. This is an opportunity though to show you that not all is doom and gloom if you don't have an airbrush, because now I'm going to thin my paints down, and with a brush, I'm going to follow the exact same steps and show you some wet blending on these. For a quick job, I think these look good. Using a bright white such as Arctic White from Vallejo, I cut laps of the models and give a rough highlight to the skin. This is where about 30% of my brain power is afforded to painting and I watch TV shows or other YouTube videos. I've recently discovered this guy called Flushing Badger Painting on YouTube. Oof, he's not half bad. Talks a lot though. Now this is the part of the video where if I had any sponsors, I'd be making some pitch to you about how painting without the correct overhead light is like surfing the internet without a VPN. You best make the most of this time. One day I'm gonna be trying to sell you a shaving product with my reflective naked dad bod casting all of this stage light straight back at you. You're welcome. Anyway, now I wanna base these Tyranids on some cracked ice. I start by spraying the bases with those same greeny blue colours and now I'm ready to lay down a thick coat of white crackle paint, also known as Fact and Luck? Did I just get demonetized? Hopefully that's German for something inoffensive. I use a rainbow paddle pop stick to apply this across the base and tidy up the edges before showing my patience by placing them on a windowsill for 24 hours until they have completely... Wait, no. Apparently I couldn't help myself and I'm painting the psychic smokestack on the Psycho page. in bright magenta, then giving it a dry brush with a bone wipe. And now I'm adding some gloss to the brain areas of the smart bugs. What am I doing? Be patient, Michael. Go to bed. Don't you have work in the morning? Okay, apparently I stayed up watching cartoons. So let's keep this train going. 
Uhu super glue, toothpicks, and something to mush it around on. There's only about a 10 second working time, so I load up the toothpick and drag it back and forth across the teeth to create a saliva effect, because this big kahuna is drooling over the thought of getting to eat you and the cat sitting on your lap. Sorry, mittens. You can also add paint to the mix to stain the saliva if the bug has been feasting on a raven guard, like in the case of this psychophage. Psychophage! Now they've dried and the crackle paint is looking great. Gamers Grass have coloured alien grass tufts which I'm going to use to decorate the bases as the blues and pinks complement the colours on my models, and it further sells the idea that this is a distant world. I like my army of bugs to be splashing ankle deep in turquoise mystery, which I'll achieve by mixing UV drying resin with a pinch of ink and swirl. I slowly pour this across the bases, and every now and then I also add these little pearlescent beads that I got from eBay. Why do this? What do they actually mean in the lore of my hive fleet? The answer to both questions is, I don't know. When I started this two years ago, I didn't think I'd actually be explaining it to anyone. But here we are. What's with all the questions? Maybe we can take a look at these models now, and then we can hit the bonus lightning round. The Hive. It grows. I have no idea what these models do in game just yet, because my index cards are still on back order, but I like the idea of being able to cycle some more big bugs through my thematic lists. A reminder to tell me below in the comments what needs to be the next Tyranid model or models on my painting desk. But now... Lightning round! Lightning round! Lightning round! Lightning round! Lightning round, lightning round, lightning round, lightning round. Yep, you get it. When I started the channel, I released three videos on the first day, and one of those was a guide to painting some of the Tyranids' most popular hive fleets. A user named Yellow Hornet reached out and let me know about his intention to begin his very own custom Tyranid hive fleet, and on that day, he became one of Flashing Badger Painting's very first subscribers. I asked Hornet to share his progress with me on Instagram, and fast forward a year, and with the release of the Leviathan box set, Hornet has put paint to brush, begun his journey, and given me his blessing to share his work. Hornet, your goal is colourful, vibrant bugs on a jungle base, and these look awesome. We went back and forth with different ideas, and I even had a go at painting one in this style and seeing what I could come up with. I've used the same paints, but tested to see what it would look like with a weaker pink skin, similar to how I paint my models. But you stuck to your guns and I agree with you. Your stronger pink pops out a lot more. To experiment with jungle bases, here's a snapshot of what I attempted. I start with a sand base, and once dry, I base with Deathworld Forest, then wash in a Thonian camo shade. Once this is completely dried, I jump across to a dry brush of Warboss Green and then Skarsnick Green. I love these paint names until I have to read them out. I have a handful of different basing products to play with and use bright green flock for patches of grass and some small shrubs for the termagant to be zigzagging between. Serpentine, serpentine, serpentine. This undergrowth is great for pulling apart and gluing around rocks or the model's legs to help make the base look cluttered with flora. Then finally, some laser cut plants from Gamers Grass for extra shapes and character. Now that I've finished the model, I've realized that I don't have any use for it. And if I post this to you as a memento from the channel, well, it's not very cost effective and it's probably not an appropriate use of the postal service. Hmm. But what if I add a couple more models? Foolproof. This video is about batch painting after all, right? 
So pretend I'm giving some glorious TED talk about batch painting again as I whip up a squad of 10 termagants to join your army. Oh, also these termagon sprues come with ripper swarms and you only get two in the leviathan box which is madness. So let's take you up to four in total. BAM! Alright, let's post them. Wait, hold up. If I post them now and they're not within synapse range, then they might burst out of the parcel and attack the nearest postal worker. I can't have that. Give me a second, I'm gonna paint you a parasite of Mortrex as well. are packed and ready to go. Now Hornet, jump back over to Instagram and I'll grab some details off you so I know what to write on this box to get it all the way across the globe and into your hands. Now for the rest of you, don't get any funny ideas. I can't paint models for absolutely everyone that's a subscriber, but full disclosure, I really love painting and I don't have that much room on my shelves anymore. So if this does help someone new to the hobby, get really hyped, feel the love and grow our community, then sure, I'll do it from time to time. Now is a perfect opportunity for me to make my pitch to you. If you aren't a subscriber yet, I hope I've chipped away at the reasons that were holding you back. If I haven't though, that's okay. I've got some really cool ideas for videos to come and I'm gonna slowly work away at you and lure you in. Thank you so much to those of you that are already channel members or subscribers. It is your support that is the reason why I can make these videos still and why the channel is growing at an alarming rate. Kind of like the enormous hive fleet that's currently headed our way. Until our horrific demise, I've been Mike, this has been Flashing Badger Painting, and I'll see you on the next one. This is so dumb, this is the recording of the psychophage. Psychophage! Psychophage! So dumb. This is so dumb. Psychophage. 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 Psychophage.